Hey guys, John here. I have one last cheesy Casio preset for you guys. Now, I call this one the 80s pulse lead because it's it's kind of cheesy, and also if we add an ARP to it, it can make it even more cheesy, but also kind of fun as well. So with that being said, let's dive into Bitwig. So here we go. Now, this is the first patch, and <laughs> with, with some drums and uh, an ARP, it's, <laughs> you'll see. And if we turn off the ARP and kind of just look at it how it is, because you can play it either way, you can play it as a lead or you can play it as an ARP. <laughs> oh man. Okay, so uh, there's something about pulse waves that just, if you use them in the weirdest way, they can sound cheesy and strange. But with that being said, let's dive into this patch here. Okay, so we have a new preset, and we're going to be starting off with the analog engine ride because cheesy analog old keyboards, Casio. <laughs> here we go. Okay, so analog engine, and this first guy is going to be a pulse wave. So let's go to the pulse, select our square, and bring this all the way up to... A pretty high amount at uh, 0.926, so all the way to 0.926. So we're pretty close here on the on the duty cycle. 0.926, right? Something like that. Oh my goodness! I can, there it is. Jesus Christ! And let's switch to this guy. Okay, so we have this. So it's very nasally, and then this guy is going by LFO2 very slowly and a very small depth. So let's get LFO2 and drag and drop this guy to the pulse width. And what do we say here? This is going to be 0 0.04. So go all the way down here, 0 0.04. And this is going to be moving. If you look at LFO2, it's going to be free running. So let's let this guy be free, right? So free running, and then our rate is going to be at 0 0.079. So 0 0.079. So very slow. Okay, so the next oscillator is also going to be a square, but we're not going to be like doing any modulation with it. We're just going to be changing the value and dropping it down an octave. So the second one, drop this down an octave here like that, and then also a square. And the width is going to be 0 0.675, so 0 0.675. There we go. Okay, now the volume here is going to be not exactly full, but we're going to go 18 point or negative 18.3. That's fine. <laughs> no, man. Okay, so voices, we're going to be using two. And then the stereo detail, or the stereo spread here is going to be 60.8. Next up, we're going to be doing some modulation on the fine tuning, and this is going to be LFO1, and the amount is going to be 0 0.06 or negative 0 0.06. So LFO1, drag and drop here, and we can go negative, doesn't really matter. So negative 0 0.06. Now this LFO1 is a little too slow, and if we look at this guy here, we're going at 5.89 hertz. like that and then this one's going to be poly keyboard so we have that kind of sound and then for our envelopes here i don't believe we're doing anything too crazy this all looks default if i remember correctly but on the second one so now we need to run this through a filter so this one's going to be the jupiter 8 i think this one kind of makes the sound a little bit more authentic, I guess. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> so on the cutoff, the default value is going to be 745. So bring this down here to 745 right there. And then our envelope 2 depth is going to be a 0 0.09. So drag and drop envelope 2 here and bring this down to 0 0.09. So we have something kind of like that. 
Now we're gonna change the shape. Did we change this? It looks actually quite default. So we have one, five, 500, all these are default. And I believe, yeah, I believe those are all default. Okay, so we don't, we don't really have to do much there, but we do want to drag our, uh, our first macro onto the cutoff. So drag and drop this guy here. And if we look, the depth is going to be 0.31. So bring this up here to 0.31. And then let's relabel this as cut off. There we go. And then we're going to do some resonance as well. And this is going to be a 0.43. So drag and drop and bring this up to 0.43. And then for our macro where it is by default here, we're going to be at like 0.292, something like that. Okay. And then we're also gonna be using a sub pulse, but we'll get to that in just a minute because we need to run this through the other filter. So the signal comes out of the oscillator into the first filter and then out of the first filter to the second one. So we need to change this one to surgeon and we're gonna go for a high pass. And the value here is going to be 61.1 Hertz. So let's bring that down. I believe that's all we have to do in the analog engine. This one is actually pretty simple. And then for our utility engine, we're kind of doing the sub thing, but we're actually sending this one to the filter. So for this guy, we're gonna turn this oscillator on, go to the square wave, and then the width over here, we're gonna change this to 0.775. And then for the output, let's bring this all the way down like that. And then let's drag macro three at 0.43. So drag this here, drop it. And then we're gonna change this to 0.43 or 0.44, that's fine too. Double click and go to sub. And then now. However much we wanted that in the mix, we can always adjust it. Now, if this is a little bit too little in this, in the mix, you can always just increase the modulation amount or the depth. Maybe something like that. Totally up to you. Okay, so we have that all set up here. So now let's hop into our effects because I believe we're doing, uh, we do any voice pan. Ah, oh, we did a little bit of voice pan, yes. Okay, so this voice pan is random one at 0.15. So let's drag random one over here and change this to 0.15. Now this is kind of cool because this is a random value and depending on what value it is, the note might be more in the left speaker or the note might be more in the right speaker. It really just depends, it's, it's random. So let's click on random and let's look at this guy here and we're using sample and hold and this is uh, sample from the white noise and then re-triggered by poly keyboard. So select sample and hold and this should for the most part be default but let's change legato to poly. So as I hit these notes, it kind of moves a little bit around. So if I did the super exaggerated, that's kind of what we're doing but just not, not, so, uh, not so exaggerated. A little control. Okay, so we're pretty much all set up here. So now we can jump into the effects. So this is kind of where a lot of the fun happens. So in our effects, let's change out this delay for an EQ, which I kind of generally do take out some of this mud here at 158. So we're kind of bringing out this stuff. Right, it's kind of just cluttering it a little bit. And that's all we're doing for there. And then we go into a compressor and this is not too crazy, just kind of keeping things a little bit more. Compressed, I suppose. Maybe a four to one ratio ish. And a tad bit of gain reduction. And I don't believe we're doing any output. Okay, so next up, we're going to go for a chorus. And for the most part, I believe all this is going to be default except bringing down our, uh, our or bringing up our feedback. What is our value here exactly? 0.371. pretty close to it. And then our dry wet amount is going to be 39. So bring this down to 39. Cool. Okay. So moving on here, we're going to go to the BL flanger. Which is, this one's actually kind of nice here. And again, for the most part, 
Default's going to be fine, but we don't want so much of this here. So if we look at our macro, this is going to be 0.27 and bring this down to 0.27, something like that. Okay. And then let's double check that. What is our release? 75? Is that right here? 75? Oh yeah, increase our release a little bit. There we go, just a tiny bit. Kind of cutting off a little too quick. Okay. All right, so next up is going to be some delay and reverb. So delay here we have, click this here, let's add our delay. Now this speed is going to be 1 over 8 on straight time. So bring this up by one click here. And let's see, for the most part, what do we change here? So a little bit a little bit more stereo spread. We can kind of just eyeball that here. Feedback, it looks about the same. Fine, also the same. And then just a little bit of EQ here. Also ping pong, and then bring that back here. And then our amount is going to be a 0.39. So bring this up to 0.39. All right. Okay. So then the next thing is going to be our reverb. So click and add our reverb. And if we look at the reverb here, let's see, we have the pre delay, which is going to be the default here, the size at 1.1. So we can bring this up just a little bit like that, make the size a little bit bigger. And then we're going to drop down the decay to 0.293. Then the rest should be default except for the amount, which is 0.39 or 39%. And then last but not least for our effects here, if we go to our aux, we have this reverb here, which we can switch this out for a uh, for distortion. So let's click our distortion and let's see what we're doing over here. And remember this post effects, make sure to click that because we want this distortion or the saturation to actually happen at, or like to have the input of all these effects chains to go into the distortion. So make sure to turn that one on here. And if we look at our distortion, we're going to be on tape. So let's go over here to tape. And then for our drive, I believe this is going to be the same at 18. Dry wet is going to be full. And now we're just sending a little bit to that. So if we you look at this here, this is going to be macro 4 at 0.27. So we can actually just drag and drop this here. And then look at our depth here, 0.27, and increase this a little bit more. So just giving a little bit of saturation, nothing too, we're not trying to like mangle the sound, just give it a little bit of character, a little bit of hair. And then label this as effects, and let's go add our other effects. So if you look at our first patch, we do, or our first bank here, EQ's fine, compressor's fine, we do want to change out the chorus. So 39, bring that down, drag and drop this to 39, so 0.39, there we go. And then for our flanger, we can do the same thing, drag and drop this here, 0.27, which means 0.27, and then our delay is going to be 39. Drag and drop this here, and then bring this up to 0.39. And then same with our reverb, 39% as well, so drag and drop that, and 0.39. Also, I should label this as res because we need to stay labeled. So kind of cheesy. Okay, so we have that. And then, like I said before, we can turn on our sequencer here. If we look at this guy, this is going to be what we're doing. So let's go to our sequencer. Let's turn this on. So let's bring all this here to the left. So we only have two steps like that. And then on our octave, we can bring this up by one, which is kind of what I did here. So... But yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's actually very cheesy. And I, I don't know, for some reason, I've been using a lot of square waves and pulse waves and kind of just uh, recreating these weird old sounds. It's like thin and nasally and... Yeah. 
anyway, uh, I can play that for a while. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. But yeah, if you don't want to recreate this patch and you would like it, there's a free link in the video description below and it can be yours. Thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you learned something and we'll see you in the next video.